parents who dislike, hate, or resent your children. What happened? My son told his friends that I was abusing and bad touching him because he wanted the attention. We were very close. Child services were called and then the police. He stuck to his story. I don't hate him. I never could. Sometimes I'm very angry, but mostly the betrayal gets me. I would never have believed he would do that. After several awful months, I think it's going to be alright legally, but the legal fees and stress has been overwhelming. Things will never be the same between us. He is a teenager, by the way. I remarried a wonderful man, my soulmate, about two years ago. I have two kids of my own, one son and one daughter. One is 14 and the other is 21. He has a daughter. She is almost eight. We met when his daughter was about three and a half. It's bad to say, but personality-wise, she hasn't changed very much for the last four years or so. I don't necessarily dislike my stepdaughter all the time. I have just had to distance myself a bit. She has no manners, no respect. She's spoiled and will whine until she gets her way. For example, I overheard her tell her great-grandmother to shut up. I also heard her tell her mom, you are the most disgusting person I've ever met. When they scold her, she always tries to say she was just joking and then she will start to cry and saying nobody wants me around and stuff like that. I know this is turning into a long post and I apologize. It just has been building up so long. I try my best with her and I had such high hopes for a close relationship with my stepdaughter but I have found that our personalities clash and I am used to having respectful kids. My husband tries his best to make her act right but every time she goes back to her mom's or her grandparents it gets worse. They give her everything she wants no matter what and they allow her to talk to them anyway because she's still little and they may not have any more kids and grandkids. So I don't blame my husband. I feel bad for him because he's tired of having to be the bad guy all the time. Oh, and she likes to torment my cats. I tell her all the time to be nice to them, pet them gently, or better yet, leave them alone. But she likes to chase them, pour water on them, throw dirt at them, etc. She has plenty of toys in her room and also electronics and games, but she will cry and whine until my husband lets her use his laptop. She likes to watch toy commercials on YouTube and tell us what she wants for Christmas or her birthday. She makes these five page long lists of what she wants all the time. And then if she doesn't get it, she whines that she never gets anything she wants. Her mother told us she picked out a $50 Halloween costume last week. She said that she told her that was way too expensive to pay when she is only going to wear it a few hours. Well, stepdaughter proceeds to cry and say she doesn't have anything and never gets anything and she needs new parents. One more thing that makes me mad. If adults are in the room trying to have a conversation, she will interrupt repeatedly until they stop talking and listen to her or watch her do some little something that could have waited. This child gets more attention than any of the other children, so I know it's not lack of attention that causes it. One more thing I thought of. About a year ago, I had my little granddaughter over at our house. She was about nine months old at the time. Stepdaughter got caught trying to give the baby rocks. Well, we all got on her and tell her how dangerous it is to give the baby rocks. Babies can choke and get injured or even die. All that. Well, a few minutes later, I catch her putting the rocks in my grandbaby's pocket and I go mental. After telling her she could choke and die if she gets hold of a rock, she is putting them in the baby's pocket. Just one more example that there is something not right with this girl. When my wife was pregnant with our first and only child, we knew before birth that she was at high risk of Down syndrome because the gene was quite prevalent in both of our family histories. We both got tested and the doctor told us that our daughter had over 80% chance that she will be born with Down syndrome. Our marriage up to this point was happy and wonderful. We dated for nine months before getting married and were more of partners than a couple. Everything we did, we decided together. We bought our own business, which didn't cause any fights, but rather we thrived because she was good at what I wasn't and vice versa. I was a messy kid before I met her and she helped me change my ways. She lacked hobbies before I met her and I helped her finding things she truly loved doing. We were happy. Very, very happy. The doctor told us that abortion was a viable option, but we needed to decide within a week or it would be too late. I knew right away that I was for the abortion, but didn't know how to bring it up. When we finally did sit down and talk, I brought all sorts of articles and books on kids with Down syndrome. I tried to show her rather than convince her of how hard our life would be if our child actually did have it. It was going to be hard for both of us to have a healthy child, let alone one that needed far more care. We were both busy and happy. She didn't want to take that option, and there was nothing I could really do to change her mind without really, really making her mad and ruining our relationship. So reluctantly, I went with it. 
As luck would have it, our daughter was born with translocation Down syndrome. Only 1% of all cases of Down syndrome are that, and it has a lot to do with hereditary conditions. I don't want to go into how bad our life became. I really can't even handle typing it out. My wife had to quit her job, which she adored. We had to move to a smaller house after a year and a half because of the medical bills. When I came home from work, she was too tired to talk or even see me and went to bed, and my entire five hours of free time every single day we spent caring for our daughter in some form or another i didn't see my friends for nine months missed my cousin's wedding because we couldn't even think about traveling everything changed and everything changed for the worst my wife and i only talked when we fought either she was too tired and that caused her anger or i worked too much and didn't help her enough to tell you my life went to absolute crap is an understatement because i can't even imagine how much extra stress my wife must have endured in those first couple of years. I don't hate my daughter, but I do resent the fact that we had her, even though I knew our life would be this way. I go to the park sometimes and sit and watch all the happy fathers play with their kids, watch them throw balls around or just run around the jungle gym. That's the life I wanted, that I dreamed of, but I will never have. My wife and I are still together because neither wants to burden the other by leaving. I ain't even gonna take a side on this one. Like, I think if you're gonna have a child, you need to have absolute open honesty about your feelings of what's gonna happen and all that stuff but uh, i'm not really gonna touch this one too much not my child but my husband's youngest son from his first marriage i don't hate him i care very much for him but he is impossible to like he's 12 and completely incapable of entertaining himself in any way if he isn't pacified with television or some other electronic device he's wandering the house being as loud and obnoxious as possible because bad attention is still attention if you give him attention or try to find an activity to do together, he'll simply try to use that as a bargaining chip to get something else he wants later. He will do anything to play video games, and if you allow it, he will play all day without getting dressed or eating. He will also pretend to be sick to stay at home from school to play video games. He has a time limit but will lie and sneak to try and play longer. Taking away these things does no good. He'll continue to be an obnoxious, annoying little poo until he can play again. Sometimes I let him play so he will stop bothering everyone in the house. He's a chronic bedwetter so he frequently smells like urine, he's got issues with pooing his pants sometimes too and swears that he has no idea when or how it happens. He's been to numerous doctors and counselors who tell us to give him fiber. He's been instructed to change out the dirty clothes and put them in the wash, but he won't admit to it. Instead, he soils his pants, he'll often hide them somewhere until his disgusting cash is discovered and he gets in trouble. His punishment is usually a video game ban, but his behavior never changes. I love my husband more than anything and his other kids and my kids are no issue at all, just the okay youngest. I feel like a monster. Oh yeah, some kids just do not have any mind for like cleanliness or anything like God, hiding your soiled underwear and stuff like that in a cache, that sounds just ugh. Ugh. This may be my deepest, darkest secret ever, and even now it almost brings me to tears to type this. One of my children with mental illnesses has been self-deletion adjacent and has survived numerous attempts. There have been times where I have had to sit in a chair in her room and watch her all night while she sleeps. Everything is locked up in our house. I keep cleaning supplies in my desk at work and bring them home only to clean and then take them back. Everything is a battle with her. It's embarrassing all the time we have an ambulance or cops come over. There is so much more that goes on. Anyway, I can remember one really, really awful period in our lives about a year ago where I honestly felt like she had not survived her attempt and that life for me and her siblings would be easier. There are a lot of days where I feel like I resent her inside. I just tell myself and try and remember that she is still the sweet girl I remember from her being a kid. What I resent is the person she is on meds and the depressed, self-harming person she is when not on meds. I don't dislike or hate my son, but I damn sure have some resentments every now and then. I have a five-year-old with extreme behavioral and anger issues. They stem from a large dose of steroids required for a long period of time for a previous medical issue. I am not in the dark about these issues. I have a psychiatrist and counselor that we pay for for him. However, no one is willing to do anything because he is five. No diagnosis, barely medication. 
I have had to inpatient hospitalize my five-year-old son twice. I have another child younger than him that was born around the same time that all of this started happening, and I just watched the difference between the two. I sometimes wish I had switched and had her first because the only reason I was trying again was so I could have a girl. I watch happy, functional families, and it makes me angry because we have been burdened by this. We can't travel, we can't go to parks or things of that nature because he targets other children, and I don't want to be that butthole mom on the playground that just lets my son beat the crap out of other kids. CPS is now involved for the fourth time in two years because at school he cracked a kid across the head with a rock because the school refuses to give him an IEP because he is so young. My husband and I have tried every parenting book, behavioral therapy method, strategy, etc. Nothing seems to work. Some days I just turn my phone on silent because I know it's going to be the school calling me saying he won't sit still in class and keeps running out of the classroom acting like a butt. But I have asked them repeatedly for an IEP and they refuse. Don't get me wrong, I love my son more than life itself, but it freaking kills me to watch him have to live like this. He is so angry all the time and sometimes I have to hold him in a full Nelson on the floor crying so that he won't hurt himself or anyone else. I wish other parents knew what this torture was like, the constant self-doubt and wondering where we went wrong. It is slowly killing my marriage and I honestly wouldn't blame my husband if he did leave. In fact, I'd probably send our daughter with him just to make sure she was safe. So yes, I completely understand where some of these other parents in this thread are, and I don't judge anyone anymore when they say their kids have pushed them to the edge. I've been there and back so many times, I have the route memorized. You know, maybe it's hypocritical of me, but I've got ADHD, you know, a thing that a lot of people for a long time and probably still think, oh, it's just a way to hand wave bad behavior and all that. But uh, something that I think is genuinely just an excuse to hand wave bad behavior is ODD, which is Oppositional Defiance Disorder. I think that is a absolute crock. I made an account just for this question. I beyond resent my son. He's seven. He lies all the time. He never listens and does harmful things to others. His father took off before he was born. The states say they can't find him without an SSI or address for me to receive support. I've been living off the state for over six years. I work and go to uni full time. Every day is an argument and fight with this child. There are no fun times. There are no happy moments. He makes me miserable. All I want to do is graduate with my bachelor's in engineering. Every morning morning he makes me late for class because he refuses to listen to a single word. I've tried all the ways of disciplining or rewarding to get him on track. He's in special education for speech and math support. The doctor diagnosed him with ADHD last month. We are working through getting the right dose. But for now, he made me miss my calculus class again because he refused to get out of bed this morning. I don't think I love him anymore. I feel like he's sabotaging my life and chances of getting out of the welfare system. I'm miserable with him in my life. I'm not a parent, but I have had my oldest niece, four, almost five years old, basically 24-7, barring the few times every month or so that her mom will take her home for a 12-hour period. Since she was a year and a half old, at this point I am the only stable parental figure she has ever really known. I do not hate or dislike her per se, but I do resent her. I resent all the attention she requires. She wants eyes focused on her all the time, and when she feels like she's not getting enough attention, she becomes a holy terror. I know part of her attention seeking is because her parents, who live right next door, pay little to no attention to her. I know a lot of her behavior stems from them basically ignoring her. She's very, very loud and likes to make nonsense animal noises all the time. She loves pretending to be a dinosaur. She loves singing. She loves running and playing just like any other four-year-old. But she does not get the concept of quiet time or indoor voices. I suffer from migraines, and I have explained to her every time I have one that I need her to play quietly until my emergency medication starts working. So I tell her to sit quietly and watch a movie or draw for an hour or so. And as soon as I lay down, she's in my face, almost yelling for me to play with her or watch her do something, etc. She's also a bit of a brat, too. When she doesn't get her way with something, she immediately runs to my grandmother, who gives her whatever she wants. Toys, sweets, whatever. When she does get in trouble, be it for screaming non-stop or destroying something, this happens at least four times a day, if not more, or being mean to or playing too rough with cats and 
walking dogs, timeouts, spanking, sitting down, talking, explaining, rewards, none of it works. Any attention, good or bad, she wants it. When I tell her not to do something, the minute I'm out of sight, she's doing it. When I tell her not to pull on the dog's tail, she just pulls harder. When I tell her that she cannot smack the cat for not wanting to be pet or held by her, she chases the cat and corners him and then hits him when he scratches her. It doesn't help that I am literally the only one in the house that will stand up to my grandmother and put my foot down about her being disciplined. I am the only one that takes none of this little girl's bullcrap. Everyone else lets her get away with everything. Beyond all this, and as guilty as this makes me feel, I also resent her because during my last miscarriage I still had to take care of her. I resent her mother for this too, but I resent her because it does not matter to her that even though she was told I was sick or even when she was sat down and someone explained what was happening, she still wanted me to play with her and would not leave me alone for longer than 20 minutes. I resent her because for months after my miscarriage, she would still ask me when the baby would be here, and since it is now shortly after she was told the baby wouldn't be here, she is asking again. I understand that she's just a little kid, but it still hurts, and I feel guilty for that too. I resent her because even though I have no children of my own, I now have to live my life as if I do, which means now that I am working out of the house on third shift, I have to sacrifice my sleep in order to care for her. Because her mother won't, I resent her much more lately because every time I try to discipline her or work with her, she's taken to screaming in my face, you're not my mummy, I don't have to listen to you, she needs therapy for her anger, for her attention seeking, for the neglect from her parents, she just does not know how to cope, and I don't know how to help her. Don't get me wrong, I resent her mother much, much more than I do my niece. In fact, I would go as far as to say that I hate her mother for all of this, for screwing up her child, for ignoring her, for expecting me to care for her kid, while imposing rules for how she wants her child raised, and tells her that she doesn't have to listen to me. I hate her mother with every fiber of my being, every time I have to comfort her when she's crying for her mom because she misses her. I love my niece, though. I love spending time with her and taking her to the park and making meals together and doing art with her. I love taking her to the museums and carnivals and movies. I love finding things to do with her that will teach her something or discover something new. I love that every day I find out something new about her as a person, and I love that we are so close. As much as I resent her for demanding my attention above everyone else's in the house, I mean, I live in a three-bedroom house that nine people reside in. There are plenty of people to play with. When I had my last miscarriage, I am also grateful for it. It would have been so easy to allow myself to wallow in the depression I fell into when it happened, but her excessive need for my attention made it to where I couldn't. All I could do was throw myself into taking care of her. My niece is intelligent and beautiful, she is strong and creative, and so very opinionated. I know that someday, if she gets some therapy, she will do great things. You know, I'm a strong believer in nuanced opinion, but some of these people writing about these kids just sound freaking bipolar. Oh, I hate them. Oh, I resent them. Oh, but I love them and they're beautiful and they have such a great soul. I, I, I get it. You can easily fall into, like, disliking children very easily. You know, I get it. Parenting is the hardest thing, quite honestly. It's a huge freaking sacrifice, whether they are disabled, like, you know, some of the other stories that we've heard, or like this, where it's just an attention-seeking kid. But my God... God, I, I just wish they wouldn't start with, like, as much as they, like, hate them at the start, and then it's like, oh, but it's all good, like, you know, they're great and everything. It, I just don't believe it at that point. I love my children to death, and I would never go back if I could, but I absolutely feel it is normal to have a moment here or there where you're not too thrilled to be a parent. It completely changes everything about your life, even when your children are average, let alone have disabilities that make things more difficult. My children have no behavior problems, no problems at school, no health problems, nothing like that. But it's still difficult. I still have moments where I am resentful, not necessarily of them, but of the loss of what my life used to be. It would be nice to not be a parent every once in a while, and I don't mean send them to grandmas for the day, because even when they are gone, you still have that responsibility. This might be one of the absolute best answers here, but it's also extremely vague. Like, I'll admit, for everything I just said previously, I do appreciate all of the, uh, I guess, honesty that people kind of have with it. 
I live and breathe sports and activity. His mother was a personal trainer and I was a gym rat. Our first date was on a climbing wall. We got married in a canoe. We took trips all around the world. We lived life like a travel brochure. Our son was born with cerebral palsy and AMC, which basically means the joints in his arms and legs are locked up and will never move or develop. He will never walk or stand. He has limited use of his arms. We will never go fishing, canoeing, or hiking together. Everything that was so important to his mother and I's lives before him will never mean anything to him. In every way, he is so unlike me that I struggle to relate to him at all. When he was born, we both were in shock. He got RSV at four months and ended up in the PICU. He wasn't expected to survive. Honestly, his mother and I discussed it and quietly agreed that it would be best that way. We stopped visiting. He's 11 now. Mentally, he's above average. He gets A's in competitive private school. He competes in maths and spelling bees. I hated school. He is cheerful, kind to animals, and unfailingly polite. I was a sarcastic, rude little turd who butted heads with everyone. For some reason, he's still intent on impressing his parents, though I've rarely encouraged him. Despite all his wonderful traits, I still try to avoid seeing him because it makes me feel guilty, depressed, and disappointed. And I feel like crap about that because all his accomplishments tell me is how much I should love him. Anyone else would be thrilled, right? If not thrilled about the medical care, at least impressed with his achievements. I work long hours so that I can provide the best medical care he needs, the best education, anything material he could ever want, and so that I can stay away from him. Because I know he knows. He tries so hard that sometimes I'm afraid it's all a front to make it easier for us to like him. Well, at least you can admit you're kind of a crap person. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Linked in the description below.